Hey my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Mozart. Welcome to Mastering DP500 series of videos. In this series, I'll try to help you understand different topics related to uh, becoming a certified enterprise data analyst. It's the latest Microsoft exam related to data platform products such as Azure Synapse Analytics, Microsoft Purview and Power BI. So I'll try to focus on uh, explaining different concepts that you need to understand in order to successfully uh, pass this exam. And before we start, I will also, uh, I will also uh, suggest to check uh, the YouTube channel of my friend uh, Andy Cutler on Data High uh, UK. So you will find description and links uh, down below. And Andy also has a lot of great resources for mastering DP500 exam. Today we will cover a topic related to external tools in Power BI and try to understand how they work in synergy uh, with Power BI with special focus on DAX Studio and Tabular Editor. Stay tuned! Power BI is an awesome tool. There is no discussion about that. Finally, it's been recognized as an industry leader by Gartner for a few years in a row. However, when it comes to Power BI development, there are certain features and capabilities missing from the Power BI desktop as a main tool for authoring Power BI reports. Or, in some cases, features are there, but you must have thought there has to be a more convenient way to do this. Luckily, one of the biggest advantages of Power BI because of its popularity and wide adoption is a broad community and the sheer amount of contributors that work on extending the built-in features of Power BI Desktop. So, in a nutshell, external tools are mostly free tools that provide additional capabilities and or ease the development process in the Power BI ecosystem. Since they are developed by third-party contributors, external tools come with one serious limitation. They are not officially supported by Microsoft. However, that doesn't or shouldn't minimize their significance, especially for some common business scenarios where Power BI Desktop simply can't accomplish the task. Here is the simplified illustration of the way the external tools, ones that are accessing your Power BI data model work. First, Power BI Desktop launches a local instance of Analysis Services Engine. Then, Power BI Desktop forwards connection details, such as server name, port number and database name, to external tool. Next, once you are done with the work within the external tool, external tool forwards connection details back to Analysis Services Engine. Finally, Power BI Desktop will apply modifications to the dataset. DAX Studio is a very comprehensive external tool, created by Darren Gosbel. You can use DAX Studio to write DAX, perform a different kind of diagnosis, update query plans, understand the time spent within the Vertipak formula engine and storage engine, troubleshoot performance, format your DAX code, and many, many more. We'll cover DAX Studio features in more depth in one of the next videos. Tabular Editor was created by Daniel Ottiker. This is definitely a go-to tool for data modeling and not just data modeling, in Power BI. Not just that it supports some of the most popular features, such as creating and managing calculation groups and setting the object level security, which can't be natively performed from Power BI Desktop. Tabular Editor provides a whole range of features to speed up your day-to-day -day Power BI development. Same as for DAX Studio, Tabular Editor will be covered in more detail in the next module. At this point, it's important to distinguish between two different versions of Tabular Editor. Tabular Editor 2, which is a free version that supports most of the required development tasks. Tabular Editor 3, which is a paid version, which provides many advanced features. In my humble opinion, Tabular Editor 3 is well worth the investment that will pay off in the longer run, as it will save you hours or maybe even days of Power BI development. To conclude on this topic, external tools are a very important part of the Power BI ecosystem, as they provide additional functionalities and features 
that will make your life as a Power BI developer much easier. Keep in mind that external tools are created and maintained by the third-party contributors, not Microsoft itself. So here is a short demo how to connect to uh, external tools directly from Power BI Desktop. As you may see on the, uh, on the top, I have a tab called External Tools. So once I install DAX Studio, for example, and Tabular Editor on my local machine, the same machine where Power BI Desktop is also installed, I can access those tools directly from Power BI Desktop. So here I have just a simple uh, sample data set that I will use to show you how to connect to tab, uh, Tabular Editor and DAX Studio. So first let's connect to DAX Studio. And once I click on it, it will open a new window. So on the left hand side, I have my uh, tables. In this case, it's only one table. So I have my tables, my columns and so on and so on. So you can do a different things here in DAX Studio. On the top you see server timings, query plans and so uh, different other options and features that we will discuss in more details in one of the next videos. That's DAX Studio. I can also go to Tabular Editor. Don't be confused. There are two versions of Tabular Editor as you already learned. Tabular Editor 2 is a free version. This one, this is a lightweight editor so you can access your model and see your tables, partitions, columns and so on. And you can manipulate different properties of your data model here. So for each column you can change uh, properties for that specific column. While Tabular Editor 3 is a paid version of this product, but again, if you ask me, it's well worth investment and uh, it contains a lot of advanced features for uh, uh, for intermediate to advanced Power BI developers. So just to mention that for the exam itself, you don't need to have Tabular Editor 3. Tabular Editor 2 free version is completely enough to perform all the things that uh, exam requires for you, from you. That's it folks. So we started our mastering DP500 journey and I hope you enjoyed this first, first video. If you want to stay tuned for the next videos and if you like this video, please hit that like button down below and uh, please make sure to subscribe to Data Mozart channel in order to follow on and continue uh, your journey on learning and mastering DP500. See you soon.